So good to be back here this week. Ah, it's a beautiful day, brisk, nice. Opened a window in here for a little bit at the beginning because it was so hot. So I hope you guys are okay. Bob got on me though. Don't be opening windows. Got boilers on here. Okay, but we're, we're just in this great place. I'm finishing a series on uh, For the Beauty of the Earth, a great hymn just filled with incredible verses. There's actually like 10 verses to this song. We typically sing three or four of them. Um, Last week, Molly preached. She preached about the Israelites' struggle to see God's goodness in the face of giants and walls. And I think she beautifully concluded we are never alone. God has gone before us, and God will bring us home. I was like, yes, amen. This week, I'm going to jump back into the series one last time, and I want to share a verse that's actually rarely ever sung. Maybe it's never sung. I don't know. But this is what it is, and I I put it on here because I wanted to be able to see it together. For the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and brain's delight, for the mystic harmony, linking sense to sound and sight. And then, of course, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. I love this verse. It kind of shocked me when I was looking over all the verses that are available. I was like, oh my, that's good stuff. So I see this verse as kind of a celebration of the beautiful parts of humanity, of the goodness in humanity, not, not just the, you know, the flesh, as we call it, but the goodness of humanity. And I think our ability to change and transform through trauma and relationship and beauty and experience. And I think also being transformed by a pursuit of beauty and a pursuit of knowledge of what is good. Hmm. I think we hunger and thirst, especially as children, to discover everything. And we ask all the questions, don't we? I, and many times we have that passion zapped from our being because we're scolded for asking the wrong questions or too many questions or a question that an adult maybe can't adequately answer. (laughs) So it's like, nah, I think you're done. Uh, But I think what's amazing about it is curiosity is built into us, this divine curiosity. And you know the phrase, curiosity killed the cat. I think that's a silly statement. That's a statement used to get people not to do stuff. And not to search stuff and not to be curious. But it's true when it comes to actual cats. I am sure of that. (laughs) Right, because I have a cat we've had for two or three years. We're still getting used to the fact that this cat tries to destroy everything in our house. And it has destroyed many power adapters to laptops. She loves the brand new ones that are plugged in. That's the best ones. And so, yeah, curiosity probably killed that cat like four times. It's got five lives left, so we'll see what happens. But you know, it's, it's not a great saying when it comes to human beings. It's not, because it's a, it's a thing that discourages us from seeking. I don't like that. I never use that with my kids. <laughs> I don't think you guys probably do either. But it's built into our DNA. We desire to know. We desire to search and seek and find. It's good. Did you know about the inventor of the television? Probably not. Mm. One thing I know about all inventors is everything created began with an ignition spark of curiosity. They wanted to know something. They wanted to find out something no one else has found out before. And that was in their being this same yearning to discover and find something new and good and helpful to society. And uh, Philo Farnsworth was the inventor of the television. He had designed and built the the world's first working all-electronic television. Before, it was like a combination of mechanical things. But he figured it out, and he built and designed them around like 1934, produced them in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So that's why I chose this inventor, because my first 30 years were in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So I think it's so cool. But he did all of this for the good of society and just for the sake of discovery, pursuit of something good curiosity built into our DNA, and I love that. I love it so much, and that's what he did. 
He built something entirely new and good. And maybe you're not an engineer. Maybe you don't have that type of curiosity, but maybe you do. Maybe your curiosity spills into other areas like theology and art. Maybe it spills into earth sciences and physics and chemistry and astronomy and other things. As I was writing this, I actually first wrote astrology. And then Chrissy's like, I don't think you want to write astrology. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that's probably not the word I meant, I meant to say there. Culinary arts, right? I know that. It happens in my house every week. Digital design and so on and so on and so on. There are so many ways. So no matter where your curiosity and delight is sparked, we all know what it's like to pursue something, you know, and have that insatiable quest to discover something new or to make something better. Mm. So when I thought through this theme of, cel theme of celebrating the senses and, and our like capacity to absorb goodness and beauty, I struggled to pinpoint a passage from the scriptures. I, was, I don't know what I want to land on. And Molly brought up uh, Psalm 139. Psalm 139. And earlier this week. I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I want to focus on some grounding aspects, super grounding aspects of what King David had to say. The inescapable God. Lord, oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. First of all, in this psalm, and I'm going to read the, bit, the next bit soon, but in this psalm, God is the originator of divine curiosity. God searches us until we're fully known. God searches us. What a terrifying and vulnerable thought. God searches us. Until we're fully known, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? The good, the bad, and all the nitty-gritty details. What does God do when he searches us and fully knows us? How does God respond? This is how God responds. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. This is how God responds to knowing us fully, <laughs> to discovering us, to having divine curiosity. Our God has divine curiosity. And if we are Imago Dei, if we are made in the image of God, we have divine curiosity all over our DNA, just built into us. That's who we are. That's who we are, we are meant to be. So curiosity does not kill the cat when it comes to humans searching and knowing and discovering. We are fully known. We are fully known. I love that. We're designed to explore life, and we're designed to explore life through our senses, through our five senses. I saw some lights strobing. That happens all the time. It's been doing it for four years, so we don't know how to fix it. So if you're wondering, that's what's going on. So throughout the Hebrew scriptures, stories of men and mostly women center around springs or wells. They sent around springs or wells where people come to collect water, realize their deeper needs, and leave with what biblical authors tend to refer to as living water. Right? That happens all throughout Scripture. People who are ashamed, exhausted, uncertain, anxious, afraid, and lost come to the spring to find life. They come there to find life. And where is your spring? A little question I have for you. Where is your spring? Hmm. Where do you find life? For me, God often resonates through music. I don't know if that's one of your springs, but God resonates through music, and more recently, uh, in my life through nature. And just yesterday, when I woke up in the morning, I actually just put in a set of headphones and listened to like five songs and uh, just kind of let it ground me. And that's what songs can do for me. And there's this one song... 
It's actually called, it's a weird name, it's called Stupid Deep, and I didn't actually print out the lyrics, um, so I'm going to read just a little bit of it to you. But where's your spring? Where do you find life? I find, you know, it's great that Green Bay has all this incredible water and beautiful scenery and places you can go where you can actually go to actual springs. And it's incredible to spend that time there letting the senses, letting your senses just feel the beauty of the area around you. Maybe it even shifts your perspective. But yeah, this song's called Stupid Deep. And the lyrics in it are just incredible. It says this, what if who I hope to be was always me? That just threw me. That's such a good line. And the love I fought to feel was always here. What if all the things I've done were just attempts at earning love? And what if where I've tried to go was always here? And the path I've tried to cut was always clear. Why has life became, become a plan to put some money in my hand when the love I really need is always there? Hmm. That just, that gets me. It's just so powerful. Stupid deep. <laughs> Where do you find your spring? Where do you find that place that just grounds you? For some people, it's that routine of opening up a bag of coffee in the morning. Mmm, you can smell it. You can hear the bag crinkling. Pouring some into a grinder, maybe the aroma beginning to permeate the air. Measuring and pouring the coffee grounds in the water the smell of the coffee brewing, and then grabbing your favorite mug and the taste you hoped for, sometimes. Even in the seemingly trivial routines of our mornings, I imagine many of us find delight in that experience. Maybe you have other routines that you do in the morning. Maybe it's sitting down with a book in your favorite room. And you delight in those experiences to be aware of this experience is the real key to seeing every day as a spring of living water. Because God is just not found only in the revelations, but also in the routines. God's found in everyday life. When we can see everyday life as a spring of water, a spring of life, it will not be a drain on our lives. As the Apostle Paul was speaking to the people of Athens in Areopagus, he's standing there to these people who don't know necessarily the God he's talking about, but he tells them they actually do. He says this, God intended that we would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. He's not far from us. He's telling all these people in Athens, Greece, for in God, listen to this, we live and move and find our being. We live and move and find our source of life, our spring in God. And he says, as some of your own poets have said, we are God's offspring. For in God we live and move and have our being. Amen. God is in revelation and God is in routine. God delights in knowing us fully and invites us to find life through our senses. The thing we were looking to find, the love we were looking to find, God we were looking to find was always here. The love we try to earn was always here. The path we try to cut was always clear. Doesn't that just fill you up with life? For the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and brain's delight, for the mystic harmony linking sense to sound and sight, and then we thank God. 
We have gratitude, Lord of all, to thee we raise. This is our hymn of grateful praise. Our re- the revelations and the routines are our hymn of grateful praise. When we search for love, it's always there. It's always there. And I thank God for our divine curiosity built into our five senses. Beautiful. Where is your spring? Let's pray. God, I thank you so much that even in the midst of chaos at times, whether it's in our own lives or out in the world, I thank you that we can actually, within ourselves, because that's how you work in us, we can actually experience your delight. And I thank you that then we can reach out and we can experience the world through our five senses as this divine curiosity that's built into our DNA. And I just pray today that we won't forget that. I pray when we search and we feel like we're coming up empty, that you will remind us that the path is clear. You remind us that we don't have to strive anymore. You you will remind us that the work is already done. You will remind us that it is in you that we live and move and have our being. You're the source of all life. You are the spring of living water. Life on this earth is short and I pray that we will protect the little time that we have. And God, that we will realize that everything in the end is going to be okay because you are with us. Spark our divine curiosity, God. Help us to search and find. Awaken our senses. In your heavenly name, amen.